Hey, we're going to look at a little bit of uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. And uh, I, I want to begin by asking you uh, a question that I know the answer to. Do any of you ever get angry? No? Everybody has a bit of an issue once in a while by getting angry? Gideon, you ever get angry? Yeah. Does your dad ever get angry? <laughs> All of us get a little bit angry. But is there, is there a particular area of life that would make you more quickly angry than other things? And, and if we use just a common phraseology, people like to say, is there something that would you know would push your button? Is that, does that make sense to you? Well, do you think that the apostles, long after the death of Jesus, uh, ever got angry? You think they ever got angry? Well, when I read the first part of 1 Peter chapter 2, I kind of had the feeling that Peter was angry. It, it, it made me feel like he was angry. Uh, and he's going to talk about heresies or false teachers. But when you read the New Testament, the, the false teaching that was really out there primarily was this. People who were saying that Jesus really wasn't the Son of God or he really wasn't crucified and resurrected and, and that kind of thing. They weren't talking about someone interpreting the book of Romans different from someone else because they didn't have a what? They didn't have a book of Romans. They, they weren't talking about anything like that. It's almost always the heresy to which they refer and the false teaching has to do with the identity of Jesus. Now, if I were going to push Peter's button, what might I, what might I have talked about that would push his button? Well, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's pretty good because uh, he, he thinks Paul writes a little hard sometimes. The, the one thing I can tell you for sure is that when st people start talking against the deity of Jesus, the reality of Jesus, it, it seems to go all over him. Now, why would that be? Why would that be? Back in chapter 1, it says, we were eyewitnesses of His majesty. Okay, all right. There, there it is. Who, who would have been with Jesus more than anyone else? The apostles. And even Peter was one of the, I hate to use the word, inner circle. Remember, frequently, Jesus will take three of them with Him. It'll be Peter and James and John. So no one knew Peter better. And in fact, Peter's makes the most classic mess up of everybody among the apostles, at least that we know of. Remember the classic mess up that he makes? He says, Lord, I will never what? I will never deny you. And Jesus kind of looks at him and you can almost see a little smile come across Jesus' face. So it's a, though it's a really rough time in Jesus' life. He said, Peter, before the, before the morning happens, before the cock crows, you'll do that three times. And you go, that's, that's crazy. But then when Peter does, he melts in shame. I mean, he's so embarrassed and so hurt. But when he meets Jesus, what does Jesus do? After Jesus is resurrected, what does Jesus do with Peter? He just grabbed, I mean, he, 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 there, there's no problem. I mean, how would you feel about Jesus had you been in Peter's shoes? Would you love him? Would you appreciate him? Would you go to battle for him? I mean, it, it, it's kind of like if someone starts talking badly about your father. I mean, just starts really talking badly about your father. What are you, what are you going to do? 
You going to get a little upset? I think I would. Okay? I think I'd get really upset. I think we have a big problem going on. So I want you to listen to what Peter says and see if, see if you think I'm right. See if this feeling is coming across to you. Now, he's, he's, he's going back to the old, the old days. That, that's all they had to refer to is in terms of anything that was written. There were false prophets among the people. He's talking about a long time ago, Old Testament days. Just as there are false teachers among you. There are false teachers among you. Now, I want you to be really careful as you read and listen to this, what a false teacher looks like. They secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them. What, what, what does that bought them mean? Redeemed them. Uh, redeemed them. Gave his life for them. His blood was the price for our redemption. So they had these destructive heresies, this crazy teaching that ends up denying the sovereign Lord who purchased them. Uh, so that, you, you've got to get that down. And they're bringing swift destruction on themselves. Now, this is where you find out, I think, you, this, this, underline that one topic in your mind, bringing swift destruction on themselves. This is where you're going to find out that Peter is really going to unleash here. Uh, many follow their shameful ways. Oh, that, that's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. We follow people so easily. Whether you believe that or not, we are a people who are gullible. And we follow other people so easily. And from the day of the New Testament time, if you trace history, it's a story of people who could speak well and had, had strength to them, and they gained followers. So on Memorial Day, I knew that Riley Crandall was at Baylor this year. And as a freshman, you well know that she's in the, the rotation lineup as a starting picture. I didn't care anything about that, really. What I asked her was, tell me about classes at Baylor. And, and I said, she said, I'm taking two religion classes. She told me about the first one, and she said, I did not like it at all. It was more of a philosophy course. And I said, that's what's going around the country. Everybody thinks they need to teach philosophy in the beginning. And I said, I understand the difficulty of that. She said, the second one, though, was the history of religion. And she said, I found that to be so informative because it talked about different pathways here and there and over here and how different groups came to be. And, and it's all about someone who's able to persuade others because we are easily made to follow. And... Look across our nation today. How many people so easily follow this thought or that thought? Everybody kind of have that? Uh, man, I, I hate to get off the subject too much, but I, I, I will tell you this. Have I, have I told you about the lady who sent to me a, a nine-page typewritten letter? And she started the letter by saying, you're the one person to whom I don't want to send this letter because of our relationship. I told you about that? You did it. Well, let me, let me tell you part of that. Uh, she's going to medical school in, in, late, late in life. But when I started the conversation with her, I called her, I said, I'm drawing a bell curve on a piece of paper as I talk to you. And I said, on the tails of the bell curve, I'm cutting those off and I'm etching them with my pen. And I said, those tails of that bell curve are areas of opinion wherein you and I might never agree. We may never agree. And I said, our society has become so polarized that many people live in those etched areas. 
And what makes it so bad is that if you don't agree with me and I'm in this, in this etched area, then you are automatically my enemy. By the way, a lot of people in churches like to live in those etched areas. If you don't agree with me, you're automatically my enemy. And I said, but in the center of this curve, I'm drawing a big circle. I'm writing the word agree. Because there is so much upon which you and I do agree. And we have a relationship. And if we start there, then we can talk about the areas <laughs> where we disagree without fighting. See what I'm saying? And I said, by the way, that's how my marriage works. I said, in the etched areas on the tails, there are areas wherein we do not agree sometimes. And we can talk about those areas without fighting because we have this great big center where we start. Well, people who live in the etched areas in our day and time right now are so loud and so vocal that they so easily talk and gain what? They gain followers. They gain followers really easily. And it's, it's getting worse and worse. Now, these people are very destructive. They're even denying the sovereignty of Jesus. And they're bringing on themselves their own destruction. Because many follow the shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In other words, you get so mixed up with so many people and you follow so many different ways. What is the truth anymore? How do you find the truth? In a, in a messed up world where it's so many different things going on. We have some of that problem today, by the way. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. You know, we asked the question even last week, why would anyone deceive anyone else? Why would anyone use deceit? And it's almost always what? The reason being. Selfishness. That's right. It's selfishness. So their greed, their excessive selfishness makes them make up stories. So they're going to, they're going to gain from this. But their condemnation has been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned and sent them to hell, putting them in gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment, if he did not spare an ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, by the way, and if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what's going to happen to all the ungodly, do you think he's wound up? Do you think he's kind of wound up? Do you think he's kind of saying, folks, you better listen to this. These people are teaching things that are wrong and they're taking you away from Jesus Christ. And they're, he's the one who died for us. He's the one who purchased us. And they're making it look like he, he's not real. And they're doing it because of their own selfishness, their own greed. Let me tell you, don't you remember what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah? And don't you remember what God did in the days of Noah? And by the way, he did that to angels too who sinned. Uh, but there are people today who say, well, that story of Noah really didn't happen. Now, that's an interesting one when they say that because some of the same people will go to science and say it's obvious that this world was covered with water at one point in time. They say that the layers of sediment, that it's obvious this world was covered with water. Millions of years ago. Millions of years ago, but they can't explain. They, they, won't, they won't buy this flood deal at all. Uh, and there are people who don't agree with the Sodom and Gomorrah story. That really didn't happen that way. But Peter says it did happen that way. And... Uh, and then he talks about Lot. And uh, drop, drop down to about verse 10, last part of 10. Bold and arrogant, these men are not afraid to slander 
celestial beings. Now, how, how, how far in the dark do you want to go? You deny Jesus, and they become so bold and so arrogant in their, their mindset that they are so right, they'll even slander. What does it mean, celestial beings? The Father, the Son, the Spirit, the angels, the, you know. Uh, You've got to be pretty, pretty convinced. And yet, right now, right now, how far do you and I have to go to find people who will slander just like that in very public ways and in very public places? Uh, isn't that interesting? Uh, it seems like it's increasing. It is increasing. It is increasing. And they slander in different ways. And so your action hero like Arnold Schwarzenegger was asked last week about death. And he said, when you're dead, you're dead. And all these people who think there's some life after death, and he used some bad language, and called them kind of names and kind of made fun of them like, how dumb can you get? And I'm thinking, man, you're pretty sure of yourself to be able to make that kind of judgment and say that kind of thing. I don't think all those muscles are going to get you very far with God. You know? Find out it's true. Yeah. So, but we got people talking like that all the time. Who, who deny the, the, the whole concept of this book. Uh, everybody can understand that? Well, I'm going to stop with that. But I'm telling you, I think Peter's a little angry. And I think Peter's saying, folks, you better not get caught up in this because I'm telling you it's wrong and I'm telling you what's going to happen to these people and you better look back at the stories you do know and you better wake up. <laughs>